Hello, I, I have been investing in the stock market for about a decade now and I have a lot of money in it in all sorts of different companies, uh, portfolios that are about dividends, uh, they are about uh, growth or some companies are about value. I mean, I have a little bit of everything. Uh, I like investing in all sorts of things and I have also done trading. But um, during my career, if you could say so, in uh, investing, I have seen a lot of downturns and this happens quite often. There are many, many corrections, as we call them, and a stock market correction tends to be a correction of 15% or 15% is about uh, the amount that the stock market goes down in order to call it a correction. And if it, if it goes more than 20 to 25%, that becomes sort of like a crash. But a correction is at about 15% uh, level. And um, this happens a lot. I mean, it probably happens once every once or twice or two years. And the last time that it happened was about two years ago. And what is my reaction to that? And uh, I wanted to tell you a few things about it so that you can react, react appropriately. So this is what I'm trying to kind of uh, communicate in this uh, uh, YouTube channel. If you are making the proper investments, you, have, you should have no fear about these kinds of downturns. You should actually embrace them. I personally actually like when, these things, when things like this happen because I'm buying stock. This is why I bought uh, Alibaba as well lately, as uh, the stock market started going down a little bit. Now, uh, when you're buying stock that has a lot of value and is backed by companies that have a lot of value, you really have nothing to fear because there could be bear markets, but it's okay. I mean, they will revert at some point. And as long as something makes money, everybody wants to get a piece of it. The problem really arises when you are holding companies that are massively overvalued and uh, trend, trendy companies that do not justify their valuation. And this is where you have to be accurate and um, you, sh you shouldn't lie to yourself. In order to evaluate that the stock ha uh, is, um, is accurate in terms of its current valuation, you always have to be taking a look at how much money the company makes. This is always the, the most important thing. And a lot of people just um, just hear about a company and because you know everybody uses the products like Tesla for example they automatically think that buying the stock is a fantastic idea and they should be immediately buying the stock because everybody is buying the product and that's a very very flawed way to think about it because a stock and a company is two completely different things as an investor you want to be find, finding this investment vehicles that will allow you to make the, the most amount of money in a long amount of time with the less risk possible, the, the least risk possible. And so when you're buying a company that is not making enough money to justify its valuation, you are adding more self, you are adding more risk to, for yourself. Because when things go down and the stock market starts reverting and become, we're getting a bear market, the first stock that's going to be sold is going to be the one that was overvalued before and it's going to be the Teslas, the Amazons, all these kinds of stocks that have been enjoying massive influx of money are the ones that are going to be liquidated first. This is a very, very important thing that you have to remember. But if you are holding companies that are making boatloads of money, even if there is a downturn for a, even for a year or two, they're going to go, they're going to come back because these companies are going to continue making money Maybe a little bit less, but still, I mean, they are proven companies that make a lot of cash flow. And even if it goes down a little bit, it will, um, you know, it will eventually come up again and uh, will fix itself over the years. But when you're having a company that's not making any money and it doesn't have any cash flow, it doesn't have any assets, it could even go bankrupt if there is a downturn of that sort, because they, they may not even be able to pay their debt. So this is why it's very, very important to understand what you're investing in and why you're investing in something. And I wanted to, to mention the example of Netflix here, for instance. You will notice Netflix here has a market cap of $176 billion and it went down 22%. Um, it was more than 25 at some point. Because why? Because it, it, it couldn't get as many subscribers as it, as it got in the previous quarter or so. And this, this would happen, but uh, you see the massive overreaction, right? And this happens again because the stock is massively overvalued. You see the stock action here, the stock price action. So the slightest, uh, the, slightest, the slightest bad thing, sort of like bad thing that happens with a company, 
will result in massive massive downturns over here as you saw like a little bit less subscribers a massive downturn over here with uh, netflix and if that coincides with the uh, stock market generally going down then you are looking at corrections of like 25 percent which is like one fourth of its value is, is an insane correction is a crash really and so you will you will have to always examine things like the the free cash flow and uh, this is why i always always mention in my videos that the free cash flow is extremely important when you're making investing decisions and uh, let's take a look at the free cash flow of uh, netflix over here this is in the negative apart from 2020 because of the pandemic for the most part this is in the negative like the company is make is, is losing money and uh, is making tons of revenue and is losing money so what is going to happen in, uh, in the next few years with this company. Who knows? I mean, it could enjoy some growth and eventually start making some money, but there's also competition. Like, this is an extremely competitive space. Like Disney is coming coming for them, HBO, so many other companies really, and uh, probably more to come. And uh, you also have to account for the massive expenses that uh, creating uh, movies and series have like um this is this is uh, these are amortized costs that you you don't even see in the first few years like they could be amortized in a period of four years so i really don't know why why somebody in how somebody could actually get into this stock right now and uh, imagine earlier when it was up much more than that like 22 percent higher it's all speculation and uh, as uh, you know as you are trying to find the person who's gonna be the next the next person who will actually we call it the greater fool theory really like then find the next fool who's gonna be buying that for for this insane valuation you're basically uh, trying to find somebody who is going to accept this kind of price and they don't really understand what's going on with uh, netflix growth and uh, cash flow because if you do understand this you wouldn't buy uh, netflix right now i mean there's just no way you would be entering netflix right now or even earlier I mean, it, it's not justified by what, uh, what by Netflix operations. So, I I just wanted to mention that because again, in, in downturns of that sort, uh, you wouldn't know what uh, what to do with a stock like that. You would have to sell eventually because it will uh, it will go down if this kind of climate continues. So let's take a look at Alibaba for example, which is a completely different case here. And uh, I bought Alibaba when it was like 118, really. And um, it's also down to like 6%, but do I care? Not really. And why don't I care? I don't really care because Alibaba is making massive amounts of cash flow. Like look at that over here, 10 billion, 16, 17, 20, 29, 24. A little bit of drop here, but still, I mean, the average is like what? 20 to 22 billion dollars. And the market cap is 334 billion dollars. So it's a multiple of like 20, probably less than 20 for a big tech company with a massive brand name. So that's so awesome, but uh, Netflix, for instance, I, and I forgot to mention that earlier when I was talking about Netflix. Let's take a look at the Netflix multiple when we compare it to its cash flow. So we take a look at uh, Netflix's cash flow again, and you will see here that this was in the negative. So let's picture that it's going to have one billion, one billion dollars. Magically, it's going to be getting one billion dollars of uh, free cash flow every year uh, from now on. So that gives that makes it uh, with a multiple of 20, you would expect um, a, um, a market cap of 20 billion dollars, right? If you give it a multiple of 20, the current market cap is 176 billion dollars. So <laughs> it's like what, like m almost 10 times more, more than that. Like normally you would expect a company to be making an average of what, like 20 billion dollars in order to sustain this kind of market cap over here with a multiple of 20, uh, 20x uh, free cash flow. So that's that's uh, absolutely overvalued. I mean, you cannot you cannot even give an argument of that's uh, that's gonna somehow uh, not uh, support that. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to believe something like that. It doesn't make any sense. So yeah, I just wanted to mention that so that you know that investing in something that has a lot of that's making a lot of money could may may not be the current trend right now but you you want to be investing in not trendy things that will eventually become trendy because they are great companies and they are making tons of cash flow and so in the long run people will be buying them because again if a wallet has money everybody wants that wallet so you know it may not be trendy now but eventually everybody will be wanting that wallet so 
The last thing that I wanted to mention is something that I always like to examine when uh, these kinds of downtrends happen. The history of the US bear and bull market since 1926. You will always notice that there, is a, there tends to be brief bear markets and then there is massive, massive bull markets. Look at that for many, many years. So you kind of want to, to stay invested in the stock market, invest the money that you don't need, massively important. Always have money that you are using for your needs. Have a, some money, cash that you can use for your needs for a few years, like locked in case something goes wrong. You should always have like um, a three year sort of like deposit to use for like as an emergency fund or something of that sort. But with extra money that you have and you want to be investing in the stock, in the stock, in the stock market, this kind of opportunities when the stock market goes down like 15 and 20 percent is massive for, for buying. And this is what I do myself. This is what I did uh, two years ago. And this is what I'm going to be doing again. And so I wanted to, to show you what's happening. This is data, this historical data. And again, the stock market could continue going down for a little bit. And this is the time to buy. It's not as the time to sell. And this is why you, you should have bought value companies beforehand. You should have bought companies that give you potentially also some dividends as income. And you should have bought companies at fair valuations, if not undervalued companies, so that even if they drop in price, you are fine because they're undervalued. One such company is Alibaba. Netflix is not such a company. It's uh, an overvalued company. Amazon is not such a company. It's an also an overvalued company. So, you know, you get the idea. Hope you enjoyed the, the, you enjoyed the video. And uh, don't be scared. I mean, you should celebrate these uh, downturns. And uh, keep investing. And again, investing the money that you invest the money that you don't need. Let it uh, let it roll. Don't take it out. Let it uh, stay in the market for many many years. Uh, compound, make you more money over the long run. Over in the long run. So again, thank you for watching, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and subscribe. That helps me a lot. Helps the channel a lot. And if you did like it, please also join our Discord channel. That uh, it's very very new, brand new really, and you can find the link in the description below. I'll be waiting for you there. Hopefully we can amass a few people and we can start talking about uh, all sorts of different investment, uh, investing topics, which I really, really enjoy talking about. And you will find all sorts of various topics in uh, this Discord channel, about even about crypto. We're talking about all sorts of different things in this channel. And so I'd love to hear, to hear from you and uh, chat with you in there. And so I'll see you soon. Bye bye.